Hello viewers, welcome to Virtual School. This is Tofika Sanidio. Today we will learn a very important and confusing topic that is Zern and Participle. So let's see. Walking is a good exercise and he came here walking so notice these two sentences here walking is a good exercise and uh, he came here walking in the first sentence walking is adjourned walking is adjourned but in the second sentence, walking is a present participle. Walking is a present participle. It's very confusing. The same word, walking, in the first sentence, it's a zerand, and in the second sentence, it's a present participle. But how can we find out which one is zerand and which one is participle? This is very confusing, and most of the students become confused identifying zerand and participle. But after today's session, all the confusion will be eradicated permanently. Now, we learn about gerund. What is gerund? At first, we have to know what gerund is. A gerund is that form of verbs which ends in ing and has the force of noun and verb. I repeat, a gerund is that form of verb who is ends in ing and has the force of noun and verb let's see some words here pain book man all these are nouns and here Swimming, reading, eating. These are also nouns, but there is a sense of verb. There is a sense of verb. If I say pain, does it create any sense of work? No. Book man all the same all these are nouns nothing more but swimming reading eating if i say swimming it creates a sense of work we can imagine something working doing something reading if we say reading then we can imagine something or doing here it creates a sense of work the difference between these two uh, words, pain and swimming, or book, or reading, or man, or eating, here, pain, book, and man, all these are nouns and nothing more. But swimming, reading, eating, these are also nouns, but they create a sense of work. There is a force, a verb in them, right? So this is the difference between these two things. This is only noun and this is noun with the force of verb. And these are called gerund. Clear? So this is the difference between noun and gerund. Now we can see the position of gerund. Where a gerund is used in a sentence. Let's see some examples. Or the position of gerund. First, as a subject, a gerund can be used as a subject in a sentence, such as walking is a good exercise. Here, 
walking is a subject in the sentence walking is the subject and this is a gerund as an object a gerund can be used as an object in a sentence such as he likes reading books here yeah, reading is an object in the sentence reading is an object and this is also a zerand okay so we can uh, say that a zerand can be used as a subject and as an object and a zerand can also be used as a complement as a complement in a sentence like seeing is believing seeing is believing here seeing is the subject this is also a gerund believing this is the complement and this is also a gerund do you know what complement is if the answer is no please go to my channel and watch the video on basic sentence structure and your answer will be there then after a preposition after a preposition in a sentence we can use gerund or gerund can be used in a sentence after a preposition okay i am fond of eating sweets i am fond of eating sweets here of is a preposition and after eating this is a gerund so we can say that a gerund can also be used after a preposition in a sentence then as a part of compound noun as a part of compound noun we can also use gerund or gerund can be used as a part of compound noun such as reading room this is a compound noun right reading room waiting room and so on reading room waiting room swimming pool and so many things this compound noun takes a gerund here reading room reading is the part of a compound noun and reading is a gerund so we can say that as a part of compound noun a gerund can be used okay and uh, there is a trick there is a technique very important and a very easy technique to find out a gerund in a compound noun let's see here reading room there is a two words but they works as a single word and this is a compound noun okay if we use a for between these two words if we use a for between these two words and it gives a correct meaning then the part of this compound noun will be a gerund i repeat just use a for between these two words like reading for room reading and room i have used a for between these two words and just to read out from the right side room for reading room for reading doesn't it give a correct meaning room for reading 
it gives a correct meaning it means a room that is used for reading okay waiting room a room for waiting room for waiting swimming pool pool for swimming the pool which we use for swimming that is swimming pool right shopping mall shopping mall if we use for between these two words and read out from the right side mall for shopping mall for shopping so using for between the two part of a compound noun if we get the correct meaning the part with ing will be the gerund okay but if it doesn't give the correct meaning it won't be the gerund like sleeping baby sleeping baby if you uh, use baby for sleeping baby for sleeping does it give a correct meaning no baby for sleeping what is this it doesn't give a correct meaning so here sleeping is not a gerund sleeping is not a gerund the condition is in a compound noun if we use for between the two part of the compound noun and if it gives the correct meaning only then the part with ing will be the gerund okay besides all this there have some specific verbs that takes a gerund after them now we will see those verbs all these verbs take a gerund after them here mind old cannot help with a view to look forward to be used to get used to take to addicted to commit to object to devoted to all these verbs take a gerund after them here a very important thing notice be used to be used to generally we know after used to we use verb one that means the present form or the base form of a verb right let's see an example i used to learn english i used to learn english after used to learn the base form of the verb but i am used to learning english this is the difference between these two sentences here if we was only used to it will take a base form of a verb but if we use be used to am used to that means a be verb am is a be verb you know i am used to learning after be used to it will take a gerund that's why i am used to learning english and there is a difference of meaning of these two sentences here i used to learn english that means i learned before but now i'm not learning okay but i am used to learning english it means i learned before and still i'm learning okay so all these verbs will take a gerund after them there are more verbs here appreciate avoid busy consider deny excuse enjoy finish practice remember risk stop all these verbs also take a gerund after them let's see an example here i enjoy 
learning english i enjoy learning english here enjoy is that a specific verb which takes a gerund of it here enjoy in the list enjoy is a verb and all these verbs will take a gerund here uh, let's see another example would you mind taking a cup of tea here would you mind taking a cup of tea mind is that a specific verb that takes gerund after it here taking is a gerund mind and after mind taking is a gerund okay so dear viewers we have learned about gerund what gerund is the position of gerund and some specific verb those take gerund after them okay but one more thing i want to say do was the next video on present participle otherwise you won't be able to identify clearly whether it's a gerund or a participle okay as gerund and participle both appear same so you have to know clearly about gerund and participle so i'm coming with the participle part the next time till then allah hafiz